Hola. Hello. What's happening? Hola, you've been situated. Okay. Yeah, look at uh I refresh where we left off. I completely forgot what the agenda for this week is and everything. Um, yeah, we'll just get to go over it, I think. So. Yeah, yeah. Cool. It's just been one of those days where like everything else in my mind had to be cleared out. <laughs> Hi, guys. Yeah, we might. Yeah. What time is it there? Well, well, yeah. Good night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Where are you guys at? What? Where are you guys at? We're in Portugal. We're visiting Ani. <laughs> oh, <laughs> awesome. Here for a little bit of time, yeah. We saw Ani yesterday. Uh, she, uh, she's, you know, she's working on a project over here and living here. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like she's got some cool stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah, she is. she's always she's always had that energy, but it, even now it's even uh, her and her boyfriend are doing some particularly cool stuff together. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. Russell, Calvin, what's up, guys? Back some time. I'm, uh, I need to... Hey, everybody. We're just missing Jennifer and uh, and Adam, but I think we should just get started because that was we we agreed to. Are you recording it? Yeah, it's recording. I think everyone. Yeah. In fact, you're a, you're a little quiet. Um, is there a way? Can you try to turn up your mic or something? Or what? I'm a little quiet, really. Yeah, you're a little quiet. Okay, maybe I maybe it's just a little far. Is that any better? That's a little better. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah I don't. I don't you know can't if I switched the mind. I don't yeah. know why. That's weird. Um, let's see if I can change the setting. Audio. In Zoom there. If you really dig in the preferences, I think there's a. Uh, mic input level okay yeah um see if you can uh, mute audio no yeah hi guys hey jennifer, hi, jennifer. I'm, I'm gonna try to work on it um in between uh it's just my headphones how are people i think i, I, I think it might oh you know what okay i see <laughs> it might be my headphones you know what's there funny? Zoom has a separate volume setting than like my computer. Is that anyone else? It's kind of weird. Computers are weird. <laughs> computers, man. <laughs> I'm always like yelling at Ulla for like messing up something with like a <laughs> oh, an app or like something like, oh, how did you not know what? how to do? How? <laughs> but yeah, I think yeah. How even you managed to do it to mess it up like that? Yeah, it's like, but but it's always good to hear from a, an engineer that you know always. Uh... <laughs> okay, cool. So um, I'm actually the icebreaker person today, and so I'll kick things off. Um, so uh, my icebreaker for today is: What's an interesting skill you want to learn? What's an interesting skill you want to learn? Uh, so, uh, okay, actually, I thought I had one, but now I'm forgetting it. Um, actually, does anyone else want to get started? Because I feel like I have a good one. I, I can't remember it. <laughs> I can start. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, so I guess I'm, I've, I've started this one, uh, but not like wholeheartedly. Um, but I've been really interested in learning Chinese. Um, and I started on Duolingo, which is like not the best way to learn a language um, because it, it just takes forever, um, but it, it's pretty difficult, <laughs> but interesting at the same time, so. Yeah, try me. Have you heard about uh, Pimsleur? I've heard about Pimsleur, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I also got recommended. I'm learning on Duolingo now, but like actually uh, someone recommended me couple people and they said pizza is great yeah so. yeah so i gotta take i gotta take it to the next level if i'm ever actually gonna learn it but you know or, right, i don't know if you've used duolingo but you can kind of go on and just like spend 
10, 15 minutes and kind of, you know, learn like one less at a time, which makes it really easy. And if I skip a day, you know, it's free. If I skip a couple of days, it's not a big deal. Cool. Well, I've been learning for like three years and uh, we went to Mexico. I was able to communicate, but I was far from her fluent. Yeah. I know. That's the nice thing. You could, if you just know how to like ask where the bathroom is, you know. Oh yeah, I'm totally. <laughs> what Chinese, I don't know. I, I can uh, I can uh, go. Yeah, go I, I, remember, I remembered my uh, the skill that I wanted to learn. Uh, yeah, I, I've uh, I love music. I've been wanting to either uh, or both learn to DJ a little bit better, or and uh, to actually maybe make music, uh, electronic music. Uh, I was practicing with one of my friends, and I'd like to do that more. Find time to do that more. So, like something artistic, but I feel like I could add to my life. Okay, I'll pick, uh, I'm going to pick Calvin. Can't hear you, Calvin. We can't hear you. Can't you hear you, Calvin. Got it. Sorry, uh, the second layer of muting uh, on my mic, I had yeah. that one on. Um, the uh, skill I'd like to learn is uh, I'd love to do like small um, animations. I'd love to learn how to do that because I think there's such a cool way to like, uh, get the eye's attention and to show like two objects interacting and um, I don't know it, it, it adds like a level of professionalism to most like video productions that I feel like it'd be so valuable and be so cool so that's something I'd love to learn who wants to go next we're gonna we're gonna go in the order of my my screen bubble so I'd like to hear Erica if we haven't heard her yet I well in the near future, I like to learn some like graphic design skills and illustration skills and like bucket list <laughs> skill that I want to have is sailing. I love to learn how to sail. <laughs> I know, I know she knows. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, we can cool. One time I'll like your eyes, thank you. Yes. <laughs> nice. Um, Next, uh, I pick Jennifer. Uh, okay, well, let's see. there's a lot of things I would like to do. Um, I, I'm, I think next I would like to do dancing, mm -hmm. uh, maybe belly dancing. Sounds fun. That's good. Cool. Awesome. Belly you, Russell. Belly dancing. Oh, God. That's great. So, yeah, I guess I'd like to learn how to become an effective leader. Um, I, all of my projects have always been by myself, so I'd like to figure out how to work together with people better. It's one of the reasons why I'm here. So, and I'll kick it over to Ula. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll kick it over to Ula. I have so many, but one skill that definitely would be useful for me is public speaking. Uh, I get extremely stressed and uh, like to the point don't remember anything, like anything. So yeah, public speaking with no anxiety and yeah, just feel comfortable. Cool. Uh, who is that's, left? I think that's it. it. Good icebreaker. Cool. Yeah, it's always good to like learn a little bit more about people and. It's nice to hear you guys on a different level. Okay, so I'm the facilitator tonight. Um, so we should start with reading the agenda, right? So, okay, we will start with vision uh, voting results. It uh, should be done by Adam, but he, he's not there yet. Maybe we can start. Okay, next is value proposition research results. So I think it was Calvin and Russell, right? Next is business model canvas, uh, customer discussion, right? Um, number four, feedback system for co-op proposals. And uh, then it comes meeting time. We would like to discuss uh, options about- Yeah, it's me too. Yeah. That's feedback. And then how the meeting uh, went. Does anyone have anything they would like to add anything to the agenda? I don't have something to add, but I do want to let the team know that I'm out next week. 
Okay. Thank you. Yep. yep. And then I leave at the top of the hour. I have a scheduling conflict. Today, today, right? Today. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we can just to go. So we'll, we'll move Adams maybe to a little bit later and in, in, in case he joins. Otherwise, we can talk about it. With Adam, yeah. Maybe. I think that's there. good. Plus, uh, yeah, Calvin had value proposition, so that's perfect because then you can start. Yeah, actually, that's a better aim in case you, you had to pop out, Calvin. Yeah. You and Russell could. Yeah. Okay, would you like to start? Calvin or Russell? Calvin or Russell with our value yeah. proposition results what did you find and what did sure. you sure with our value proposals well that, before before we do that so who is the who's the um the hey. facilitator and then we have i am the facilitator what was the other role because i i'm not i'm not sure if i am that person and the keepers adam uh oh adam, adam. Oh, adam. Oh, adam. okay okay, okay. Yeah. This one. Good, good uh, catch, Russell. Um, Appreciate you catching that. Yeah. Okay. I can. Here. I can take the minutes. Okay. Great. Yeah. At least. Uh, Maybe we can. We'll swap you with Adam, or like whenever at, like you're coming up next. We can. Yeah. We can yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. Maybe you just want to put that as an action item for me to do, and I'll I'll, I'll just do it okay. on the calendar. Is it first <laughs> note take <laughs> for the night? It's right on the top. Okay. Would you like to share your screen or how is it? Yeah, I'll share the screen. Mm -hmm. no, I think we're good. Okay. Um, hopefully, my computer is going to quite. Oh, have I not logged in here? Shoot. Okay, I'll just go to Drive. Yeah, the, the document is Worker Co op Store Packagings List. Thanks. Yeah, I was trying to figure out, I'm trying to profile my machine wide. So, like, I only have four CPUs, but I'm using a load average of eight, which means. I'm more doing more than double what my computer can deal with. Oh no. Zoom is crazy. Am I like muted? That. You're not yes, muted. Sorry. It's a little hard to hear me. No. It's, it's my computer. It's this thing. Yeah, it, it's coming through crackly. So we're doing the, yeah. the All right. crackles dance. Why don't you share why don't you share, Calvin? Because my right. computer can't handle it today. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Sorry, Calvin. No worries. I'm gonna have to get another computer. You no, know, it point. might be an Ubuntu issue too, because I've had that issue on my desktop, which is kind of old, but I kind of assumed it's because it's old. But you know, there might be an Ubuntu Zoom issue there. Wouldn't be surprised. Here we are. Um, everybody can see the screen. Yeah, I think yeah, I'm thanks, in Calvin. proper sharing mode. No worries. Uh, and then I'll just scroll through and talk about it. Uh, so oh. we. Zoom in a little bit. Oh yeah, I can do that. For sure. How fast it will do it, I don't know. There we go. Let's do it some more. Nice. All right, so we have this list here. Um, we kind of started with the materials and then we thought back, okay, what's gonna be like, what things are we going to want to gather about each material um, in regards to packaging and and uh, containing our uh, products? So we thought, you know, kind of in a funnel, kind of like largest concern and then narrowing down. Uh, it's just human health. Uh, you got, you know, financial costs. You don't want it to be like overburdensome and therefore the business doesn't work and uh, other things to keep in mind. So these were kind of the criteria that we came up with that we thought would be good for um, uh, the research. So we want to like essentially treat that as a checklist and try to gather that intel on all these um, materials for the future. 
uh, what products did we want to have in mind? We have a range here that um, goes from the easy as a from okay. a product. What's that? I don't know if you um, just. I just wanted to like stop for one second. I don't know if you had a process about how you wanted to present this, but like just I just thinking about that first section. And do, do we want to talk about this now, or can we? Or maybe should we ask questions later, and you present the whole thing first? It, I just, yeah. Yeah, let's just present the whole thing because this isn't set in stone at all. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Oh, sorry. Uh, then I'll go back to mute. Thanks. Thanks. I appreciate it. Um, so then we we thought, okay, wait. Um, in regards to these materials, like, what are they going to be tackling? What are the actual like tasks? Are we going to put uh, toothpaste in a in an Altoid tin? Uh, I think was something we mentioned last time. So here's the range of like. Um, usability cases if you will so you got your your more simple tame things in in terms of containing you've got the kind category it's granola bars apples already have like an inherent seal around them from the messy innards uh, and then you've got all the way up to hard mode where you've got laundry detergent that could uh, very well eat through certain materials that we would be uh, assessing so we wanted to keep these in mind and maybe use this as like a rating system for what is the best use case for this? Because maybe we end up using multiple materials and odds are that's what we'll end up doing. Um, and we'll want to uh, I don't, use that to help solidify like, okay, how do we handle hard modes? Well, that's gonna be majorly metals, for example. How do we handle the kinds? That's gonna be cool wax paper made from uh, fungi. Um, that, those are the fun thoughts that, that we've gone through. So we've got a list of materials. We divided them up into traditionals uh, that we're used to seeing. Uh, of course, we left out plastic because it's not an option uh, for the most part. And then we uh, uh, have a list here of non-traditionals, um, like some of the cool mushroom foam packaging. Hopefully, uh, y'all saw the links in our Slack. Uh, there's some really cool um, TED Talks in there and, and some neat use cases. And then we've got experimental. And these are the ones where like either Russell or I, or I had seen these before out in the wild or on YouTube. And we wanted to follow up and, and see where these technologies are at. Uh, we were surprised to find that like mushroom foam packing is, is not part of the experimental. It's already used commercially and there's already that company. So um, in this research, maybe a few of these things will jump up. Um, but this, this took a little bit of work and uh, um, we shared in the Slack that, uh, you know, if, if y'all knew all of these criteria for one of these already, I don't, I, I, maybe it slipped by me. Maybe one of you is actually a packaging engineer and you already knew everything there is to know about tin can manufacturing and, and its costs and sustainability numbers. But um, uh, it, it looked like uh, that might be kind of a, a big ask for somebody who isn't a master in those fields. So we um, made this document. Uh, you know, we're transparent. You guys can come see us work. Uh, but here is how we divvied up the list. We, we kind of found like a nice balance between like these things are going to be related, um, the things I'm going to research and the things uh, Russell are going to research. And that's, uh, that's where we left it because uh, it was plenty of work. And, you know, uh, we figured this, this could be a, a document that uh, gets filled in more. Uh, and I think it's good that we're checking in. Uh, that's the end of my presentation. I hope everyone liked it. Please questions now and Russell and I will tackle them. I think that's a good start for sure. So should we like start reading them? I didn't hear the second part. Should we read through um, all the options here? Well, I get, at the bottom, I had a question just on the the bottom here. What uh, what made something non-traditional, traditional, and experimental? How did you guys break that up? So traditional is things that are already in use. Okay. Non-traditional are things that are already in use but not mainstream. Okay. And then experimental is not mainstream, exploratory. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. It's research and development sort of stuff. Building and research. Yeah. So like Amazon's at the bottom, it says Amazon's paper and foam padded envelopes. Yeah. It's they, like experimental because they're the only ones who use it. Is that kind of? They invented it. We'd have to try to reverse engineer gotcha. it. Okay. 
Gotcha. The, the, the way that one in particular works, um, they use the same glue that is used to make cardboard into making foam. They've come out with some sort of secret sauce to make that glue foam up. And then they're using that to, to create uh, mailers that are like puffy so you can protect items. Um, but the neat thing is, is since it's the same glue that is used for cardboard, and I know that you can decompose cardboard, I know you could decompose these envelopes as well. So yeah, they're, I think that's a powerful contender, but it's, it's less for the, um, that's more for things that are fragile and less for things that mm -hmm. like cereals right. or whatever, so. Cardboard has glue in it. Oh yeah, it does. It's corrugated, corrugated, you know, you gotta, there's like sheets of it that fit together. Yeah, it's, it's like pulp and then glues and that's basically it. So, so um, I guess, I guess, uh, moving back to Ula's question about um, like, how do you, you know, should we read this? But I think more to the point is like, how as a team, should we be, um, you know, providing input or, or is it really like, you just wanted to give us an update of where you guys were and then next week or in the following weeks, you're going to provide us uh, further input on uh, alternative packaging. Is that uh, like the process? And, and, and then I guess based on that, we're saying we're going to, even zoom it out further, like we're gonna go back to the value proposition square and say like more clearly uh, the materials we're gonna use in packaging. So yeah, that's a slightly confusing question, but hopefully you guys follow. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the first step was we were just trying to figure out the lay of the land mm -hmm. and present that. And we think we did an okay job. I'm sure we've missed tons of things, but I think this is a good first step. Then the idea was hopefully we could split up this work even more. So it's not just me and Calvin, because if you look at the decision funnel, it's pretty in depth. Like yeah. you could, and then it's times, it's like, it's an N times M problem, which yeah. is a, a lot of things to look up. But, it is definitely um, pretty ambitious. I would almost suggest that you guys pick um, like one or two things to go really deep on and I do like do everything on, you know, get all of these criteria for one or two things and then come back and we can kind of assess like, what is the actual time? What would it take to do all of them, I guess? Do you know what I mean? All right, so Calvin, why don't we meet up and we'll pick one thing and we'll try to do it together and then have like, yeah. we can present a, an example of what we're thinking of as far as the research. And are we doing research on like the materials and um if they would use or or are we also doing research on like packaging companies that we could like um partner with or buy from because, yeah yeah because uh maybe they i mean i, I was like I, I saw the video i watched i I, saw, I read these and i watched the video of the amazon thing and then i was like just like searching for companies that that mm -hmm. are green packaging and like maybe mm -hmm also one thing that we could like do some research on like companies that specialize in all this mm -hmm. yeah and i think i think that's going to be key for like the the potential to scale it like we're going to need to find either either we're going to need to make it ourselves or we're going to need to find someone that can supply it so um yeah, that's a good point that um that as we take notes and do research on these materials that we're also noting and that might be like maybe it's not part of our decision criteria that we use to to think of okay what what data points do we definitely want to collect but um in, in terms of like as we do research maybe there should be another subsection here that says um uh players in the game you know it's kind of how mm -hmm. i think of it yeah and then um you know that that will be the resource that we further research um once we kind of settle on which materials pique our interest. So yeah, I guess like that's kind of dipping our toes into the key partners part of the business model canvas. Yeah. Um, we, you know, so I mean, we can, you know, that's, that will definitely come on the when we're talking business model canvas wise. Or I mean, I mean, if you guys want to start doing research on that too, I don't want to, I don't want to stop it there because there's some like feasibility 
you know, it's like, it's almost like a feasibility study. I actually was going to say that, um, it, like where you guys are going with this, this seems like, you know, closer to the components of the feasibility study that we're going to really dive deep on, um, you know, like the materials that you want to use and say yes and no to. I mean, either, like this, but that said, yeah, this could totally happen as like a, I don't know, best work term I could use, like a background job, like while, while you know, there's other work that we're doing parallel, you guys can perhaps continue to do this and it'll probably, probably be valuable later on, so. I mean, it's definitely a great framework. I think the framework is excellent here, if that makes sense. Like the, just the, you know, the decision criteria. It's really great. So Vivek, what you're saying is that this um, research is important, but it will come like later on in the depth that they, they're trying to do. But that could, like you can say, it's not the next necessary step, but we can be doing it on the side as like just exactly. I mean, to, to yeah, to a great degree, yes. I mean, this because you're going to do really intense. Basically, <laughs> I, I foresee the 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 outcome of the information that Russell and Calvin have already taken will lead us to um, creating some sort of uh, uh, criteria or, uh, or yeah, it takes about some background voice going on. I don't know, maybe if it's possible, maybe you can mute yourself. Uh, but if you can't, hear a female's voice. Yeah. Um, anyway, so it, it, um, it, it could be used as like a, uh, like analysis that we show customers and saying, hey, this fits our like criteria, like this is how X, Y, Z, like good on these spec on the spectrum or whatever. And it can play into that um, analysis that we, we provide customers. So, uh, but I, for the business model canvas, it, personally, it seems a little in depth, you know, um, I can speak to that a little bit as well, but does that make sense? It, it makes sense to me. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I would agree. This is definitely um, very in-depth for, you know, uh, value proposition. I would say, I mean, like, I, I would say it's like, this is definitely like the difficult part. So. Um, well, this was one, this was, this was one bullet of the value prop. Yeah. Right. So well, the team's so got, the team's got to like, we're, we're all kind of expected to go deep on each of these bullets. I, I feel like. Well, I, I think, I mean, we're about to talk about the business model canvas in a, in a minute. And um, I, I just like, just to give like a little bit of a, a preview, I wanted to bring it up and when we got to that section, which was, but yeah, uh, yeah I think it's, it makes sense to sort of tail into it uh, right now. Is like, so I talked to uh, David Hammer, uh, who's the executive director of uh, IC, ICA group. Uh, I have like a first Wednesday of the month I talked with him and Shelly. Um, you know, Shelly, as you guys know, is the consultant I've been working with um, on a pretty frequent basis. By the way, for the next meeting, which will be in May, uh, I'll send you guys all an invite. Uh, any of you who want to attend are welcome to. It's on Wednesdays, uh, the first Wednesday of the month at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So you can join. Welcome to. Uh, David has a wealth of knowledge and he is um happy to share with other people so uh i love to have folks join uh but to so, so that point i asked david i said i asked him hey what is your uh, input on the business model canvas how do we get through it and like you know any suggestions or tips and his point was this is that the business model canvas we uh we should we shouldn't go like he recommended not going too too crazy on like in depth of the uh input that we pi like put into it because things will change as we sort of go and do more research or go into the market um, and we ask people or we actually do some sort of like um, real test of it um, like an MVP. He recommended like get feedback, have, have serious discussions about any bullet point that you put into it. If some, if there's like sort of a debate on one of them, maybe the onus of the person who presented it can go and do further research on their own, but, uh, and then come back and present to the team, but try to go through the business model canvas 
relatively quickly. He, he thinks it's going to be a healthy discussion. It's going to take us a few you know, weeks to do it. But, you know, try to go to it relatively quickly and that let the feasibility, let it provide direction for the feasibility study to really do the in-depth analysis. And then to the feasibility study will uh, flush out, okay, like this value prop is, doesn't make sense or this customer segment doesn't make sense. And, or, but this one does, you know, and, but let the uh, business model campus sort of be an area, uh, just a starting point for us to gather some information to be high level. And then the feasibility studies where we really, as team, we sort of break up into individual uh, or not individual, but like smaller, you know, groups and committees where, you know, we go out and solve problems. Like kind of like you and Calvin have become, Russell have become like sort of a mini committee trying to solve this problem. And then you would come back in a, a week or two, just like presenting your findings on that. And we could sort of vote on it based on your information. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And there's not really much to vote on yet. We're just yeah, yeah, seriously, yeah. this sure. is just research. Yep. Of course. I just wanted to sort of talk about, you know, you, cause you were asking like, yeah, we're going to dive into all the bullet points of the business model canvas. And I think my point is I'm trying to make is like, I think based on my conversation with David today is like, I think we, we should try to make a little bit more, uh, we should try to focus on uh, not being so stressed about every bullet point right now and let yeah. the uh, the uh, feasibility study be where we pour our like real analysis and take you know more thoughtful time behind you know every single uh, bullet that we we put up initially. Let that be where we you know decide to cross out things and add more things or whatever. So yeah, yeah. it's like a, the, the 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 business model canvas is like a draft. Yes. Of a whole company and then we'll add the details yes and we'll okay. modify things and we'll and we'll remove things and things like that yeah it's yeah, a living is, it to be a living document yeah there is a risk too that you know we go through the whole business model canvas process and then at the end say well maybe containers is not really a good fit because of when you look at it all on the board yes that's just like it doesn't fit in with everything else precisely not that it really looks like it's heading that way, but you know there is that risk. We should be aware of it and not get too uh, uh, too attached to anything at this point. I think. Yeah. Normally, when I do business model canvas, we like we all sit around, and it's like one session. So I guess I haven't like done it over a number of sessions before. Yeah, me either. Like maybe, maybe to that point, Brian. Maybe maybe it's like. Maybe we should make the agenda for the next meeting, like just two hours focus business model canvas. If, if you think that's an approach or maybe we schedule a separate one. This is just like the one time or not the one time, but like, you know, the, this is like, we're using that with this mindset. Let, let's like, you know, just set a schedule a meeting to just do that, you know, uh, dedicated and we're, you know, separate of our weekly, weekly calls so that we can make solid progress on it. That's not a bad idea. I mean, even then if we, even if we don't like, finish finish we have like um we can say like all right this is version one and we can do and we can re do research and come back to it and still go through that process yeah i like that russell wanted to say something um yeah i'm just like we're gonna need like we we decided to like last week we decided to work on this if i remember correctly because we kind of knew that we we're going to need to solve packaging um or we're going to need to find someone like a key partner that can solve it for us so that was kind of the direction we went i don't think that like there's any harm in what, like the work we've done so far and in fact like once we get a little further along on our like mission statement and, and vision statement and then we can get a website up this research could be put on our website, right? Like a blog post or something. Yeah, that's really good. Um, so it's not like it disappears. Like um, even if we don't end up using it directly, um, some other team might grab it and run with it. So oh, I'm not too worried. I'm happy. Russell, oh my God. I hope you didn't take my, what I said in the wrong way. Like, I don't think it's at all ways. I think it's very much super no, useful. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, no, that's not what I mean when I said that. I'm just yeah, it's it's. I think it's yeah. Super direction like Brad, I actually, I'm pretty even your decision making funnel. Like, I would like to learn a little more about it, but like high level, it seemed very interesting and included things I hadn't 
you know, personally I hadn't thought about. So yeah, I, I 100% think it's very valid and definitely will go away. I, I just, I'm just wondering, you know. Yeah, and and that funnel can be can be changed because like we literally spitballed that. Like me, me and Calvin like hustled when we got this done. We were, we were working really fast. So nice. um, it's all up for debate. It's all up for work. So cool. yeah. well, we appreciate the hustle. Yeah, but just to think of where are we with this now? We do we need do you guys need more help, but not going more depth, but uh, researching some different area or what is I think I think at this point we almost could stop and it's like this data is okay. We can we could stop here and if we wanna next week do business model canvas and me and Calvin can focus on that. Well, I won't be here, but if we wanna focus on that. I think that'll be a good use of our time. I wouldn't want to pull the team into this into this train of thought too much unless we really thought that, that was the next thing that needed to be solved. Um, so, do you want to try to do? Um, do you want to try to squeeze in the customers and the uh, partners this week to test out how it how it feels? Um, you know, squeezing a bunch of these blocks in one meeting. I say we go as far as we can. We're only missing one person. Yeah. And we're, you know, or Russell, Annie. You we're also missing last... Annie, too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, so that point, so that point, too, so, so I guess, first off, the first takeaway, maybe we just want to make sure we, um, in the minutes, just capture uh, the link that Russell and Calvin provided so we don't lose track of where that is, first off, I think. Secondly, I think there, there's a, we, we discussed and maybe we can just, Maybe we have a, we vote on it, or uh, I don't know. Do we want to like either dedicate next week's entire weekly meeting to business model canvas, so we can chug as fast as much along on it as possible, or should we perhaps schedule a separate meeting so that in case there's parallel work being ha happening, we don't lose momentum in an entire week on those items? Um, yeah, I think that's up to discussion. So, do you want to talk about the I'm okay with going uh, using our next meeting just for the business model canvas because I think that the there there are some left action items but they are not pressing if I'm okay so if I if I don't know there's like the day that wasn't so busy for instance so like we can keep it like that so next week we can focus on that it was busy for two guys. <laughs> okay, so so the agenda I meant, not the week. The Jennifer, agenda of today, tonight. Well, other people, I see them shaking their head in agreement. So, okay. yeah, Russell's into it. I agree. I'm just saying that, like, um, if we can get like the the business model canvas, we don't have to dive, Erica. We don't have to dive as deep as we did here with with next week's like our goal should be to just fill out the canvas, not go on tangents and do research. Yep. And then once we have that big picture, then, then we could, as a team say like, well, that bullet looks really important or whatever. Like, so. Mm -hmm. yeah, my question. This work was more of like a, this work was more of like a, um, in a parallel, parallel work with the rest of the work that was going on. But my question is, should we kind of think about it uh, during this week so we can prepare it for next time and it will go like, you know, it would be a flaw, we would fill it up very quickly, or we will be just like, you know, thinking about it as we start the meeting. So that may take like double time probably. But if we all mm -hmm. prepare, at least like think mm -hmm. about it, just give it a thought or two. I think, you have to, I think you have to be more structured about it. Like, I think if you're going to propose us planning during the week, I think there should be some sort of, at least like some sort of, you like, you know, what, what exercises, I don't know, Brad maybe has a suggestion, like, you know, should you, should we, each of us just quickly glance through and fill it in, you know, especially for Russell, maybe that, maybe that's even our approach. Like Russell won't be able to join. Maybe Russell can, you know, uh, take a crack at it on his own. You know, take 30 minutes, take a crack at it his own. I can like, he can send it to me or send it to the group. And I can, I can like, you know, like glance at it during the course of the meeting and make sure to like, like, you know, mention Russell's points. 
you know, in the meeting, you know, because he won't be there. I don't know what, if you, you want to provide more structure beyond just like saying, hey guys, like think about it. I don't know. That seems a little loose for me. Yeah, I would, I'm a little worried that we would lose the brainstorming aspect of going through it all together kind of fresh. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I, that definitely would be faster though. It would definitely, we'd definitely get through it faster. I mean, yeah. like maybe the first time, maybe if we like, you know, this is not the first time we're going to go through the business model canvas. That's not, you know, just fine. That's fine just to get stuff up on the board and we can move well, on. Brett, from there. Yeah. Maybe you have a suggestion, Brad, of like what, like in my, like for people that have never done that before, what could be like studying or like reading or doing research on something that might help us to prepare, not, right, not coming up with ideas, but mm -hmm. Like starting the business model comes, what is it like? Is it, yeah. uh, maybe so you, you have the I guess my strategy has been to think about it from like, so value proposition, we kind of thought about it from a high level of like, here's some like by high level, almost like um, uh, the, the value, just like, like a business value is almost like kind of we're tied together with the business values. And then think about it very at like the low level as we can. And we kind of ended up talking about containers and um, that's kind of where the conversation led. And I think that worked really well. Um, I was planning on doing something similar with customers and talking like high level, who would we, um, you know, like market groups, what market groups would be, you know, like, um, you know, uh, married, like families or like people who are single or, you know, just like talk about like big market segments and then talk about, okay, who are we gonna, who do we know personally who could use this? That's kind of what's going to be my strategy there. Um, you know, I think I haven't really thought about for key partners. I think from a high, you know, I think a high level. So I, I guess think about it in that kind of context. From a high level, it's pretty easy to go in. Have everyone just come with like these high level things that we think of. Um, and I think the, you know, it's a little more difficult to think at like a more concrete, like down to earth level for uh, some of the other ones. Um, I can definitely, you know, prepare for some stuff for next week. And sure. One thing, one thing I have in regards to uh, Erica's question, maybe, I mean, if you don't mind, Brad, like maybe you can find like a YouTube video or uh, like a, a blog article that like you can send out to the team and say, hey guys, like just watch this video or watch this uh, or read this blog post or something. This will give you a good, like, mindset of like how to tackle this business model canvas on your own without like if none of us were here like if you read yeah. this you watch this video you could probably do this on your own or like yeah. you, okay. you're decent at it you know you won't be like the pro like your friend was but like you'll be in the starting yeah. we can definitely get started yeah and we'll be able to get through it in one meeting yeah more importantly would yeah. that okay would that, be, would that be like something you'd be volunteered to to take as an action that's, no i think that's doable yeah would sure. the rest of us be cool with taking that as an action item, whatever he sends will consume before the next meeting? Yes. Um, and then if we all have the same source of information, we will be on the same page. Word. Yeah. Word. Yeah. yeah. So do you think, um, do you think everyone's going to come out, like is going to fill it out themselves, like on their own? And then during the meeting, we're all going to just list off everything we think of, or is it, do you think we fill it in like on Miro? On, or, or together in the meeting, right? Like us. Like you said, it's a two-story. Two-story part. You just get ready, kind of have, uh, not exact, you know, answers, just to have an idea. Just to get, okay. Okay. You know how to use okay. the canvas better, I think that might be. Okay, I got you, okay. And equally active, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and if and as you're exploring like this the the topic, um, you it might it might make sense for you to do as like a homework assignment. It doesn't have to be official, but like you could try to do a test one for yourself. It doesn't have to be related to to this um, effort, just to s see if you can practice it. Because um, once you go mm -hmm. through it, like you start to get better at it. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Jennifer, do you have any thoughts on that? We haven't heard. Yeah. Um, well, I like the idea of brainstorming. That's one of my favorite things is just to write things, to come up with, with a group 
come up with ideas and just write them down without using judgment for a while mm -hmm. and then um then later go back and weed things out yeah so yeah i think we should try to hold on to that as much as we can okay Oh, yes. So I think that's going to be the balance is like keep the brainstorming, but also move quickly mm -hmm. so we can get through it in a meeting. Sounds good. So being mindful of time. Wait, just to be clear, the action item. So the action item we just mentioned from this is. So for action items so far, I have from Russell Calvin, provide the link from your search mm -hmm. so we can go through it. Um, and Brad will send us either video or blog or something to, to about business model canvas to help us to to start and then we're all going to consume that we're going to all watch yeah, everybody read. will watch this so yeah for everybody everybody will watch it or, or read about this do you have an idea and to be clear calvin and russell are just sending brad the link he he uh -huh. we, we already all have just to be in the minutes it's just so he can include it in the minutes uh -huh. but um yeah that's but it is everyone so everyone's cool with consuming whatever uh jennifer you're cool with that also i didn't see a nod or like a thumbs up so i wasn't sure you can use chat if you're cool with what? Sorry, what was the question? Be reading or watching whatever Brad sends us in terms of, um, you oh, know. Yeah, totally. That's fine. That sounds great. Great. Because I think that's a, I think that's a really good approach in general. Mm -hmm. You know, just going back to like some of the most basic, you know, cooperative principles. Like, you know, trying to remember that we are all owners. We're, we don't have roles yet in, in any shape or form, definitely as, as a steering committee. But at the end of the day, we're like all owners. So trying to get us all to the level where we can make smart decisions about anything we are working on and building makes us all more than just like a, a gear in a machine. We're all actually very active humans in, um, in making wise decisions on our own capabilities. Everybody's eager to give their ideas, so I think it's okay. No, I mean, this, <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying this is, it, it goes, like, this is empowerment, gives us, like, it goes back to the most basic components of a, of a cooperative, so I think that's awesome. First, I'm just, <laughs> mm -hmm. Great, um, let's move on. Yep. <laughs> oh, I agree. Uh, okay, so now we actually have on the table business on the canvas and customer discussion. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, let me, uh, so I kind of, um, let me say, let me, sorry, I have to prepare the, uh, to get this thing in the right place. Um, so I kind of already talked about what I wanted to do. Um, you know, we talked about from a high level and kind of like a, uh, ground floor. I want to share. Okay. Can you guys see Miro, the business model canvas here? Sorry, yep. Everyone prepare. can see you. Yep. yep. Thanks. Cool. How do I get this to go? Oh. A little small to the font. So if you, I mean, at least this. this yeah, so yeah that, I can zoom in. I just wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Oh, oh man, I did not practice enough with Mira. Hold on, hold on, I gotta use my mouse. There we go. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, so like I said, we, we did from like a high level and a low level of, and I think that kind of um, worked out really well. So um, we wanted to move on to customers and kind of take that same framework. Um, let me get this out of the way. So customers, um, just to review, um, might be kind of self-explanatory, but you know, um, it's the, the people who are interested in your products, the people who you expect to want that value proposition and to uh, pay money to, uh, to get it, I guess, at a very basic level. Um, now, ours is a little interesting too, because I think you could probably, there's like an aspect of membership and like ourselves could be considered um, customers, because I'm sure we're going to be, um, you know, it's kind of, the co-op model, I haven't really wrapped my head around um, and how if we should like do it completely separate or if we just, just think about this as membership. But um, I, I think if we just think now, just kind of brainstorm now, who would be interested in this? Um, so like, 
so high level like um who who like what um like what large groups of people beyond just like um you know beyond everyone who who wants this more than uh who needs this more than other groups i think the head of house household is usually the person who has the purchasing power a lot of the times whether that's a partnership or, or a single parent mm -hmm. or heads of household maybe <laughs> i don't know if that's even i don't know if that's pc anymore but nope, yeah sustainably conscious customers mm -hmm. oh man we're really testing my spelling here mm -hmm. um Another feeling. Not even close. Did I, can it even? Oh, okay. It gave me a suggestion. That's good. Sometimes I'm. It doesn't even know. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a word. I don't know what it is. Um, so, um, do you think um, people local to the local to the store? Store. It's definitely a good one. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of some way to say like nature lovers or like uh, naturalists. Maybe is that tree huggers? Tree, tree huggers. huggers is that? Does anyone take take offense to that? Naturalists, tree huggers, and even uh, minimalists, because the idea is that there'd be less like leftover waste. But is it just? I think that to do minimizing tree huggers. Yeah, but okay. is, it, is tree huggers different than uh, sustainably conscious? Yes. Yeah. 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 They're just like, but they're like, they're not like all thinking about like sustainability as much as that sort of the differentiation we're, we're, we're imagining. I think that the terms, I think sustainability is still a term we're trying to figure out what it means. <laughs> Cause like you saw the bullets of our decision funnel and those were kind of all in, in the aim of sustainability. And so we're still trying to figure out that word, but we kind of okay. know what a tree hugger is and we, we know what a naturalist is. Yeah. Go ahead, Ula. Okay. Yeah, I know a lot of people that care and love nature and everything, but like they don't really know how to shop sustainable. They don't have the, the possibilities. For instance, in Mexico is really hard, so they are not the same conscious. That they sustainably conscious are mothers that like are teaching already mothers or fathers, whoever, and they are teaching their kids, you know? And they are like educated, they want to, they know why, or, and they, you know, want to pass it to, to the family, but they're not tree huggers. They just know mm -hmm. it's wrong or why it's wrong. Mm -hmm. yep, I've, I've got two angles on the, uh, a, lot, or a lot of indigenous communities speak of mother mother earth mm -hmm. um mother gives water that uh, water is sacred uh, it's part of their religion um so maybe it's earth lovers is is like one way to view this because um i was thinking at first climate change conscious people so if you're aware of climate change then maybe as a consequence of not wanting like the hot earth doom that we're going towards. Yeah. Maybe that's where, you know, it, it sparked it, but it could also, you know, without the threat of, of human self-harm doom kind of thing, it could yeah. also come from the same um, direction as like the indigenous communities with, with the love for mother earth. So, but I'm not sure how to say that like this, well, I'm no, so glad we're going to read about these because I have no idea how to like say the business model canvas version of what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we're still like, the brainstorming phase too. Um, but what I was thinking of was like climate anxiety or people who have climate anxiety. I mean, I feel a little bit too. It's just like this, you know, kind of like growing, like not, I think it's more about like not sure how everything's going to play out. It's kind of where like my personal anxiety comes from. But um, I think that, I think that's part of it. And I don't know, you know, I don't know if there's probably a better way to put it, like you said. And, you know, I don't know if we want to market to people specifically on their anxieties. It's probably not too ethical. Yeah. It'll be like a weird combination of a co-op that climate is marketing aware anxiety. People, people, climate aware people. Climate aware. Climate aware. I've oh I've got the oh, maybe the last version and then I'm gonna dip off. I'm gonna say empathetic people. 
because it kind of comes down to empathy. We share the space. We don't want climate change. We're thinking empathetically about other people. If I were to follow the guide as like describing a couple of words, empathetic people is the best I got. And then I'm going to go. I'll see you guys later. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Calvin. You have a bunch of good ones Hi. in there. So see ya. See ya. Also, health conscious people, people who care about health, no chemicals in their products and all that. Yeah. Well, and that's about conscious. Okay. Health conscious. I'd say environmentalists and permaculture permaculturalists Ooh, yeah. i would also add like um because the story is going to be all nice and it may become kind of like hip like it may start like that so it may be like you know the people who are hip because and followers you know it's cool it's to it's like that so often it starts like that mm -hmm. yeah I, I think that's like a, it makes me think of like Whole Foods. There was like a hipster aspect to her Whole Foods at the beginning, right? Where yeah. you like that's how it starts, and then you know it just grows. But yeah. we'll get like this supreme yes, too. Can I say hipster trendsetter? We have hipster. Like <laughs> yeah, uh, hipster uh, might be kind of vague, so I wanted to uh, another demographic. I would trendsetters. Ah, uh, I would say. Okay? Is, is that uh, not the same? Because I can remove that if you think that's not really. Sure. Uh, no, that's good. What? Yeah. I didn't know hipsters is the same, but maybe. That's sort of I, I, what you said. It's like what, like sort of like, you know, uh, it's got a cool cachet. Is that what you were saying? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's like I thought, okay. that's a, I, the way the word I would use for that. Like, I would call it like a trendsetter. I mean, or I don't fa know. If a fashion. Yeah. Yeah. Our it's friends, like a counter fashion. Go ahead, Erica. Friends and family, people that we know. Supporters. <laughs> yeah. I would yeah. say, uh, in a different angle, I would say um, folks that are anti capitalism <laughs> or like, you know, anti, um, like sort of these big uh, brand name corporations that. Um, that's interesting yeah it's a good angle do, do we do we self do we self uh do we fall into these categories each of us kind of some of them right i found, I found a lot of these i feel like there's a lot of this like mm -hmm. <laughs> i would i would put down teachers i think maybe that would be a good one yes it would be that's great mm -hmm. For anti-capitalism, I think maybe this is a separate thing, but like anti-big oil, do you think that's part of it? I'm just curious, like, why do you think teachers? I didn't follow that. Jen? I just what? think that teachers are a good audience uh, as a group. Teachers, are, they tend to be, they're college educated and they can understand and also disseminate. But do we, so just to be clear, Brad, is, 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 when we say customer segment, it, we, is it like a customer segment we would target that may not be familiar with the concept or do you think it's like, they'll like be easy to capture right away? I think closer to easier to capture right away. Um, I think. Um, because if that's the case, yeah. I'm a little like teachers, broadly speaking, I'm like, I'm wondering if like they would, you know, be easy targeted customers. I think so. My wife's a teacher. Yeah, I mean, I guess I, at this point I wouldn't worry too much about how well we could target them. You know, okay. I think we'll get there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Similarly, you know, like any of these, it's, we're gonna pare it down. You know, it's, we're yeah. not gonna do everything. Yeah, this so I wouldn't worry about that too much. Got it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I mean, that one is, you know, more more open-ended than some of the other ones sure yeah, yeah that's a fair point sorry about that yeah. and sorry. then the i guess the idea like for me like if i was doing this was eventually i would try to find the the, the commonality between these types of people and then eventually mm -hmm. we would have our yeah. own like case study where we create a fictitious person with personality and we describe how we would sell to them right well so you're already thinking about the framework for yeah, this yeah i know you're already <laughs> I, I already read about it i know how it works now yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think 
maybe uh, the customers could be people who like quality stuff, you know, because we would sell like quality. So people who are very like, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know how to call it. I mean, I mean that's a that's a thing to complain about with Amazon is like the you're not they're not quite certain that the the the, the products they're getting are getting come from like high quality vendors. I think minimalist fall in that gets into that category because they really yeah. care about buying qual few quality items. But I don't know right. only because I think Calvin's point was also about minimalists was just like there's just like less stuff left around when you yeah. buy. Uh, but I think what Ula's talking about beyond just that component is um, who shops in Whole Foods, for example, people who trust this is high quality stuff. Yeah. Need, yeah. Right? So. I think there's like a. I think it's a little different. Yeah, minimalist means everything organized and everything is small. So he uh -huh. has to buy this amount of flour, for example. Versus right? like someone may not be a minimalist, but they might actually buy a lot of stuff, but they actually but they focus on really high quality stuff, whatever they do buy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can fall into into different categories and. Um, but but yeah, like to answer your question, who buys in full in Whole Foods? People that want to buy everything organic and like find organic in one place, like everything they need in one place, which is also something we want to do. Like, so maybe practical people, <laughs> one stop shoppers. Yeah, mm -hmm. like high quality. I don't know if you can write it, but I think so. Yeah, so you maybe just have both those. I both both. high quality. Um, Yes. And practical. Yeah, high quality. And, and what was it? One stop yeah. shopper? Practical. Or one stop shopper. Is that and for pr practical? Is that good? Is one stop yep. shopper? Was that the yeah, it's another type of person. Yep. Right. High ex instead of high quality, maybe high expectation customers or like I don't know. Hi Adam. Yeah, that's definitely another vague one. Hi there, Uda. Oh, okay, it's not vague, but you know. Yeah. Hey. Sorry, the box didn't pop up. Did Calvin tag you in? <laughs> it seems like yeah. it dropped off, so it sounds like he only have the baton to you. <laughs> um, so yeah, high quality is definitely one of the open-ended ones. Uh -huh. And when you said high quality, um, Erica, what was the other thing you said? A high expectation customers. High expectation. That's good. Yeah. It's almost, right. yeah, we're kind of getting into, which is not bad, but you know, it's, uh, I think, think about high level, it's almost like, what are our customers value propositions? Or like, what are our customers like, um, you know, expectations? That's, that's almost what that would go under, which is definitely good too. What about millennials? Is that a, is that a thing? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I think so. Millennials. Oh, I, I avoid I avoid generational stuff just because I feel like it's so stereotypical. But I get what you're saying. Young. I would just say the young. Okay. <laughs> the, the young youngin. youngsters. Yeah. It's easier to write to the young. <laughs> no, but they keep saying a few articles, you know, and. One company, uh, that, this is a certain uh, kind of plastic. They were mentioning millennials are uh, setting this uh, need for. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think millennials is great. Like millennials well, are used like multiple times everywhere. Well, I think Russell Russell just means that like he, he, like he, he agrees with that and he's like even. You know, How about college students? Is that like a better demographic college student? I think they oh, just yeah. try to save money. Um, I, I was just reading the description on top and it says, describe your target audience in a couple of words. I think we're like yeah. beyond a couple. So should we try to like group some of these groups? I was, actually, you know what's funny? I was just starting to group the ones that were a little, um, a little more like open-ended here and put them at the top. Um, so I thought millennial teachers, hipster trendsetter, uh, were like uh, a little more open-ended there. Health conscious. Um, I don't. I don't have to do this now. Um, 
Maybe you can make mini post-its to... Let me do another one down here. Well, I'll leave this one. Yeah, I got a little bigger. Make this one big. And then, so I wanted to dig into another good exercise. Um, it might be tricky to do both these exercises at the same time. Let me see, can I steal? Um, I want to do sticky note, I want pink. And I want me, I gotta do my mouse, okay. Um, okay, so, um, there we go, perfect. Uh, so I wanted to go and it's good to dig into, um, take it from the opposite perspective. Who like, you know, we're, these are a list of people that we, we think are out in the world, um, you know, that are groups of people out in the world. Um, but it's also good to think about who do I know that, um, that I'm like, I know needs this like right now. Does that make sense? Now we, it might be good to, if, if somebody thinks of somebody, you know, I guess, uh, you, we don't, I don't necessarily want to like list people's names, but if you think of somebody like who, um, just kind of talk about like, how do they fit into these, these categories that we, we talked about. And through that, we can kind of like see if there's other categories we missed, or um, I think it'll kind of help sort the ones at the top, the ones that make the most sense. For instance, like I know teachers, I know some teachers, like would that be like a specific thing? Like, yeah, if you know a teacher who's like, happens. who has like, if you know a teacher who like has complained about like all the plastic they have to throw out in their, in their classroom or like, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, so my former coworkers, you could say Erica's former coworkers or um, teacher friends. We're, we're supposed to say specific people? Is that I guess think about a specific person in your mind and then yeah. kind of work through like, yeah, you know, I guess we can do it this out loud. I guess we, you know, maybe we, we could, uh, well, I guess, yeah. If you feel comfortable like thinking out loud of like, yeah, what causes them to, you know, what situation are they in where they need, where, where they need something like this, where they like have this issue. Um, you know, I know, and like uh, going back to, I guess kind of like head of household um, I would almost fit into like we constantly try new ways to like reduce uh, our trash and we're kind of it's like a it's like a never ending battle in the house in our household um I mean well you know good I'm so this is the thinking a lot thing um something we constantly have an issue with is our trash for whatever reason we just get, have like a lot of raccoons in the neighborhood and whenever there's like They'll just like pick through whatever trash we have, like black bag trash, like all the time. So we've like constantly tried to find ways to not have our trash like smell bad or be like whatever it is. Um, and like we've done comp, like we've done compost stuff, and we've done you know trying to do uh, less less plastic and more like cardboard things. So I don't know. I mean, that's like a weird customer segment. People who have issues with uh, trash um, disposal. Trash disposal. That's yeah. There you go. Issues. I guess that's the that's the idea of this like thought process. Is you you come up with really weird customer segments. Um, Mm. Anyone, it, can anyone else think of like somebody who who like um like uh john oliver's followers like uh, the people that follow john oliver sure because he did the he did that segment right yeah or greta thunberg followers yeah that's interesting I'm gonna put, um, I wonder, is it, is it like, a, what is about, so what do you, those are, those are definitely good. What do you think there's like, a, what is the aspect about those followers that make them 
go like go in that direction like what is there what's the driver i guess i don't know too much like i know of greta thunberg sorry i guess i don't know how to pronounce her last name yeah i'm not sorry either. <laughs> thunberg. thunberg but she's the she's the i, I don't even know how to care she's the she's the young woman who like has traveled like to the U.S. and is from somewhere in Europe, somewhere in Northern Europe, I believe, right? Uh, Sweden. Or Sweden. Does that sound right? Yeah, and she's like a environmental activist. Yeah, environmental activist. Yeah. What is the? Um, does she have a specific environmental thing? She is. It, is she? Would you put her in the anti-corporate kind of category? Uh, yeah, definitely anti-Exxon. Anti-Exxon. Well, like, car but I think it, she's more focused on, car like, the carbon side of things. It's all gone now, but, like... Yeah, very carbon. Climate change versus, like... Um, Would you say climate... Climate uh, change. Yeah. Climate activist? Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think of the specific things that she has come out against. Well, she just is you know, fossil, like, fossil fuels, like the fossil fuel yeah. energy. This is kind of, I mean, this list is kind of the same, I guess. Um, if, if. What, what am I doing? <laughs> IL, yeah. IL, yeah. Not IL. Yeah. IL. IL? IL. This is IL. Fossil. I am. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I haven't had coffee in a while. It's been like a, it's been a day. It's okay, Brad. I feel like I have a peer now because I can't spell either. The, the, the Polish, the Polish uh, native speaker can uh, spell yeah, better. Right. English <laughs> don't worry. I always I, get the from him. I, like, I, I can barely, yeah. It's, <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. Um, what? Um, what about people that don't have access to bulk stores or organic stores and that they could buy online? Oh, okay. Yeah, going down like the access um, route. Do you think like, um, so the first thing I thought of is like uh, people who live in like a food desert, if you know that term, or like yeah. food, like people in low food security or like low food security areas if you know uh that term er erica is that kind of where you were headed with that yes or like maybe they live in a, in a small town and there's only one store and there's no like a green bulk store kind of like kind of like what we want to be there's no they don't have a store with our concept near them to yeah, bulk food. Um, let me say, let me let me let's say uh, what's the best way? Because it's like food. It's like access. It's like food options. Low food options. Yeah, that's good. I got to tell you guys a story. We were at Easter this. So this weekend, yeah, this past weekend. And um, we, we went to visit my wife's family who lives in Defiance, Ohio, kind of kind of, almost middle of nowhere. Not quite middle of nowhere, but we're, we're, we're pretty close out there. And we go to sit down and everyone has a bottle of, of uh, like a plastic bottle of water at the table instead of like a glass. <laughs> it's just like yeah. it's too late i can't i can't say anything I, can, I can't like ruin easter by like starting like going down this route of like ruining the environment but i just had to sit down and and take it i just had to not say anything that to empathize with you that's like actually that, speaking of like you know just weird channels like that also comes from like i was thinking about is like even my mom you know she she like has this habit of buying like plastic utensils and plates for a big like or semi-large like mm -hmm. dinner at our house or other like events and you know i think you know if we could provide an alternative that was equally good but wasn't plastic i think she would buy it she just doesn't know anything better 
so she does that so i think it sounds like similar with your own family if like we could just provide a, yeah it's like it's just kind of just like a convenience thing water. i think does that advocates <laughs> or maybe like people who don't know better and we can like give them something better like uh, uh, easily does it make sense yeah well i think vivek i i mean i get i I think we were kind of talking about like people who want like something very convenient. Does that, yeah. that kind like, of right? Not, like super, like they're not super mindful. Like if you just give them like, like an alternative option that was just as good, equal quality, that you know just was like an alternative to plastic, they might just switch. It would have to be hundred percent compostable water bottle because we didn't know yeah. the water itself is so bad. Yeah, for example, yeah. like again with whole foods like maybe someone goes there because of the organic food doesn't care about plastic at all but then when they ask them to bring like utensils for a party and the utensils are, are already compostable mm -hmm. that person doesn't have to think about that mm -hmm. because the choice is there already and doesn't have to go out of their way to to pick something that's good so but yeah so yeah so someone who doesn't know we should uh, slowly start wrapping up so maybe oh yeah okay yes but this was great i think it's the uh yeah convenience convenience for the customers or well it's not just about convenience but yeah it's about just oh maybe it is, it is. maybe you may be right yeah it is like they don't have yeah your mom has yeah maybe you're right it's just get back to real utensils yeah maybe you're right it's just like it is actually more yeah. yeah i mean i i think that that's a part of it okay does anyone have anything else we can kind of wrap it up if there's like last thoughts here mm -hmm. there's anyone any other stuff that uh looks great already so something comes to mind maybe okay so yeah so I'll prepare some stuff so we can all do uh, the recipes, the key partners, activities, resources. How many we got left? Four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Okay. The next next week we're gonna we're gonna be fully focused on this, so we'll probably be able to chuck through. Yeah, yeah. I think partners is gonna be the big one. In my experience, is once you get partners, the rest of these, you kind of it's kind of a little more going through the motion. So there's less. Um, it's not as much brainstorming, you know. Key activities, you're kind of, you know, for example, key activities, you're just connecting your partners with value propositions. Well, I guess that's channels is definitely like, I think one that's just like, yeah, we're going to use these channels. We all like them. Okay. That's great. Cool. Next week, we may need focusing on that. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. And, and we'll, we'll circle back to the value props because I think we, we, we left it last week. We didn't really finish it. Right. So I'm, I'm just assuming we're going to go back to Brad, right? Is that, is that correct? We just, I didn't feel like we finished flushing that out last week. And this oh, okay. week, we can... Russell, Russell and Calvin like dive into a piece of it, but we we didn't. Is that is that not right? If, if that's I'm wrong, I, mean, I thought we didn't. Really get that. Well, here's well, the think... thing. So yeah. the the value prop really does direct everything else. That's why we do it first. But um, we really need to nail down what 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 our value prop is because. And it, ideally, it would be small enough that we can build the company around it, or at least start iterating on an idea around it. Um, so we we focused on packaging, a store that that focused on packaging, but that might not be the best way to have a sustainable store. And so, like, it might be just that we buy only sustainable things, and then that's it, and then we just supply our store with it. So then our value add is just like, how do we do that? Right. Um, and that might mean a, just a website or a database or something. I don't know. Yeah. But, so we did have like, we did like that. Um, you know, I think we had a pretty good list of, oh, I'm not sharing my screen anymore, but um, clean conscious food products, clarity. I mean, there's other stuff in there than containers. Um, we can, I mean, I guess we can okay. definitely come back to it. I guess okay. like, I, I, I think we should kind of move through the whole thing and then and then circle back. Mm -hmm. But we can talk, I mean, we can talk about it tomorrow. I mean, not tomorrow, next week. 
Yeah. Okay, so that will be put to the agenda. Okay. So good one. We are doing pretty good with time. Not perfect, but a good. Um, it was fun. I, I like doing this. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I think so. Um, okay, next is Vivek, and it's coming with system for cloud proposal. Yeah. So. Um... Yeah, so I've just been something I've been thinking about a lot. Um, it's just is like how how do we work together as a team, and how do we make smart decisions? Um, you know, it's one thing if you're like a one person like team and you're just making decisions on your own, uh, but especially working as a group, uh, I always think about how can we work smoothly, uh, seamlessly together. Um, and so systems always like come into mind um, for me. So uh, like how, how do we as a group uh, do these things without like feeling like so much onus on one person. And um, I've been doing a decent amount of research on it and I wanted to share some of the materials so we can all be on the same page of like why systems are important. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen. <clears throat> cool. Okay, so yeah, goal. I, I, th I think of this is like goals versus systems. Um, goals are like, we all know what goals are. You know, there's like these targets you work on, but I think um, a, a better way to think about it is like really systems. If you build the good systems about making good decisions and we can sort of do this consistently make good, um, we can tackle any goal in a, in a thoughtful, systematic way and um, be successful at it versus just focusing on one goal being like one goal being, I don't know, business model campus, like tackling a business model campus. Um, instead, if we have a system to tackle business model campus or, or any sort of a problem we're working at, we can make better decisions. Yeah. And so that's what I'm trying to, I'm gonna try to explain to you. And so this is sort of the why uh, of some of this one second. <clears throat> So this, oh, here we go. So this is a conversation with the, the author of the, of the book, uh, Atomic Habits. He's uh, like a, Atomic Habits, like sold uh, over a million copies globally. And he's like a real expert on systems and, and, and habits in general. Uh, let me just grab it. Exploring the world of plant medicine for a long time. Sorry. First did ayahuasca <laughs> decades ago in Peru before it was cool uh, uh, with a shaman. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna it's like an advertisement and I have like Can you guys hear me? Yep. I can't hear you guys actually. One of the companies I've been working with. Uh okay. Uh that's annoying that they have this advertisement. Uh okay. Well, I'm gonna skip that. Uh, and show something else. Um, here we go. I can put it in the um, in the minutes too. Maybe like if someone wants to uh, grab this link, and maybe if someone can play this link to the uh, get it to the thirty three minute mark, and then and then like like set it up so that we can play it. That'd be awesome. Like in a second, where is the chat? Uh, here we go. Would someone mind trying to like cue this up at the 33 minute mark and then, well, this is another point about why systems are really good. Uh, don't set goals, set systems. It's a quick video. Goal setting is fascinating because it's sort of a broken process in many respects. This is the way a goal works. You say to yourself, when I achieve whatever the thing is, that's how I'll know I'll have, I'll have succeeded and I'm going to do everything I can to get to that point as quickly as possible. What that means is you exist in a failure state for a long time until you reach that goal if it's a long range goal. And so as you evaluate your process, all you get is the negative feedback of not having achieved that goal. Perhaps as you move closer to it, there's some positive feedback. But if the goal is really the end state that you're seeking out, there's a lot of failure before you get there. And now here's the thing. When you do get there, it's a massive anticlimax. So there are people who achieve the, the highest highs, people who achieve the highest highs in athletics, in business, 
And if you talk to them and you describe, you ask them to describe what it's like to reach their goals, they say things like, I got there and it was an incredible anticlimax. I, the minute I got there, I had to start something new. I had to find a new goal. And that's partly because there's something really unsatisfying about the moment of reaching the goal. Unless it has its own benefits that come from reaching the goal, if it's just a sort of signpost, that doesn't do much for us. It doesn't nourish us psychologically. And what that ends up meaning is that we have to try and find something new. So really, if you look at life as a series of goals, which for many of us it is, it's a period of being unsuccessful in achieving the goal, then hitting the goal, then feeling like you haven't really got much from that goal, going to the next one. And it's a sort of series of escalating goals. A really good example of this is, uh, is say, smart watches or Fitbits or exercise watches. People, when they get those watches, a lot of them hit on the number 10,000. I want to walk 10,000 steps. When you do that, the thing will beep. You'll feel pretty good about it for a minute, but then that feels a little hollow and the goal escalates over time. People will describe going from 10 to 11 to 12 to 14,000 steps to the point where they're moving through injuries, through stress-related injuries, because the goal is there. They respond to the goal more than they, than they do to their internal cues. And, and uh, basically, there's something really unfulfilling about that. The reason the goal keeps escalating and becoming more and more intense is because when they achieve the goal, they don't actually get anything for that achievement. And so goals generally, I think, are in many ways broken processes. I think part of the problem with goals is that um, they don't tell you how to get to where you're going. A better thing to do is to use a system. So the idea behind a system rather than a goal is that a system is saying things like, I'm a writer. I, my goal is to finish writing this book, but I'm not, not going to think about it that way. Eventually, I'll have 100,000 words. But what my, my system will be that for an hour every morning, I will sit in front of my computer screen and I will type. It doesn't matter what that looks like. I'm not going to evaluate the number of words. I'm not going to set some benchmark, some artificial number or benchmark that I should reach. What I'm going to do is just say, here's my system, an hour a day in front of the screen, will do what I can, bam. And the thing is, every time you set a system and you stick to it, you're achieving something. Instead of a goal that you're failing, essentially, for, for long periods of time until you reach the goal, you're succeeding every day as long as you adhere to your system. And you end up getting to the same place, but that framing is so much more effective. It gives you the kind of positive feedback you seek. And a system is, is kind of geared towards psychological well-being. This is the thing I need to do to feel good about the way I'm moving through the world towards whatever end state I'm looking for. Goals don't do that. They just set signposts that you're supposed to look at from afar and move towards. Systems are a, a much more useful way of engaging with the world towards certain ends and certain outcomes. Uh, so that, that to some degree, like high level explains what um, one of the ideas behind uh, the systems goals comparison. The other point that I wanted to mention in that video that, um, or in that audio clip that I wanted to share, I don't know if anyone got a chance to queue it up, but um, is uh, that author mentioned is he basically says like, if you, if you try to work towards a goal, you might be successful in achieving that one goal this one time. But if you focus on a system and you, you, you use that system anytime you're trying to tackle any problem, then you'll be successful almost every time you want to achieve whatever the, the goal or target you're, you're working on. So you said that a little bit more eloquently than I did, but that's basically the premise of that audio clip I wanted to share. Um, okay. And then he even, also I, I grabbed this from one of his blog posts. I'll just read this. Um, he says, every Olympian, every Olympian wants to win a gold medal. That's their goal, right? Every candidate wants to get the job. If, if successful or unsuccessful people share the same goals, then the goal cannot be what differentiates the winners from the losers. It was the goal for winning the Tour de France that propelled the British cyclists to the top of the sport. Presumably, they wanted to win the race every year before, just like every other professional team. The goal has, had always been there. It was only when they implemented a system of continuous small improvements that they achieved a different outcome. And, and there's like a quite a story, like the British cyclists, I think for like 20 years, they couldn't win. They never won the Tour de France or something like that, like even longer maybe. And then finally, like they got a coach to basically focus on a system versus just focusing on the goal, uh, like a system of like continuously improving. So that's sort of the, the mindset I'm getting at is like, how can we as a team be very focused on um, just having a system that we can continuously be successful at, even the smallest of tasks. 
uh, and making wise decisions. Did anyone get a chance to queue up the audio or no? No, I'm just like putting it out there. I did, well, we can try it. Um, it was okay. coming out of my computer speakers. Yeah. Let me try Let me try playing it and see if it'll... Um, can you hear it? No. Can you I hear that? When you share your screen, you have like a advanced sharing option with audio maybe if you share oh, okay let me try that yeah i'll stop sharing for a second and you can try let me just yeah let's see what happens no okay Nothing. okay hold on uh i got some buttons here you said is that in more um no. let me see um, it, it's it's not it's not huge but your settings okay um okay let's let's not yeah. stress about it. it it basically like i said he he just talks about how the the difference hopefully that's clear like the difference between like a, a goal and a system and why that potentially is valuable i'll go back to sharing my screen yeah, you, you want to go? I can leave. Um, we can. I can totally send a link, and you guys can check it out. Um, I'll leave it in the minutes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, cool. So that's sort of the difference. That's the sort of the so why like, I think this is important. And so, uh, and then lastly, uh, lastly, you mentioned also if you're a coach, your goal might be to win a championship. Your system is the way you recruit players, manage. Uh, your assistant coaches and conduct practice. So this is just like an example of like a system versus a, a goal. I hope that's I hope that's clear. So I, I did a, a fair amount of research on trying to find like good systems that uh, orgs um, put into play. And I found a few things, but I, I didn't find like too many things that I felt like super perfectly applicable. So I, I kind of like molded something into like our, what potentially could be our own system. And this is, this is just like a proposal I love us to give it a shot. And I kind of did it, I kind of did it with this pr project itself. I was like, okay, how do I, what about if I just implement it in this way? So first I said, hey, I used to like, this is coming from uh, a takeoff of Simon Sinek's uh, presentation on the start with why. So I started with why. I, I wanted to present to you, everyone on the team, why I think a system versus a goal is important. So everyone understands the importance of what we're discussing. Hopefully, Hopefully I did a good enough job where you guys understand why a system can be really, really valuable for us. Then I, I focus on teach everyone um, how to execute that project um, or how to write a good mission statement or how to do a business model canvas. I wrote that backwards. <laughs> uh, uh, or how to do a good visi visibility study. Like that's how we could execute it. Like first start with why, like why we're doing it. So everyone understands the importance, the value of it, right? Then she showed them how they could execute on any of these projects that we're doing, right? Um, give them uh, the system, the tools to do it well. And then the what is our finished product? What does like the finished product look like and, and so forth? And then this is the last part beyond, you know, even Simon Sinek's model is like tools for measurement. You know, and Erica even talked about this last week, have some comparisons, good and bad examples to compare against so that we know, like if we produce a business model canvas or we produce a feasibility study, it like this is how it compares against some good examples of it. Or, um, you know, metrics or rule of thumb, uh, like we can uh, learn from or use as examples, like, uh, you know, this mission statement is like, considered really, really good by lots of marketing experts. And like, you know, maybe we compare that or, or maybe it's like a number comparison. That's actually a better way to put it. Like, and maybe it's like, uh, yeah, that's a better way. Like uh, uh, some sort of um, project that has like a number or like our score or something like that. And we can, we can score it against it. And I compare the score against it. And then lastly, another way, a tool to measurement is like asking professionals or experts for feedback. Uh, so, you know, like I mentioned for the business model canvas or the feasibility study, I'm like been talking to the ICA group and like, um, matter, matter of fact, even today, David was like, Hey, if you want to show me where you guys have gone with the business model canvas so that I can 
give you guys input or feedback on it, I'd be happy to. And so he's, he's somebody who has some expertise on this. Um, even you, Brad, like maybe presenting the, like the finished prison model canvas to, to your old colleague, if you, you have in touch, like maybe that'd be a good way for us to decide. And so this would be our potential system. Start with why, you know, to explain to the team, like any project we're taking on, like high, it doesn't have to be super intense. It's like the quick why of like, why is this important? Like, why should we care about it? Then to, like, explain how do we how do we actually do this well as a team and then lastly talk like having a clear output that we're gonna or, or, that we're gonna um you know come with at the end of the day and then thinking about how do we measure we, if we did a good job and that and that's and that's it that was basically the presentation um of like our a potential system uh open to feedback and input from the team like does this make sense? Is it, you know, could we, do you guys like it or don't like it? Uh, and then assuming if you do like it, um, you know, we could always just test it with like one or two projects coming up and, and see, give it a go in case, you know, you like it. So, so basically you're saying that our, one of our systems would be to like, when we um want to tackle some research or uh, any, any any homework you can say you kind of do what you did at the end of this presentation like answer those questions and then um consult experts or find stories of failure or, or success and all this well I, th I think like a really concrete example would be like if we if we I mean, um, like we're going to tackle the feasibility study, like pretty soon, mm -hmm. so or relatively soon in the next couple of weeks or so. So just like to get the like, someone's probably going to take a lead on sort of getting us started with it, just kind of like we did the business model canvas. So whoever that person is or two people are, they can first like get to get everybody on the team on the same page. Explain the why. Okay, why is this feasibility study important? Then they like explain to us the steps of how to like execute a feasibility study in a thoughtful way so that we all understand the process of like doing it and like um and like what like a finished feasibility study generally looks like so we our good feasibility like looks like at the end so we have a general idea and then we work towards creating that product and then once it's done once we like or sort of done like maybe our first draft is done we can we we measure the results of that of that finished product against good ones, or we bring it to experts, of, uh, like who've done feasibility studies. Maybe we talk to other cooperatives or whatever. So we have a gauge if, like, the final product that we produce is close to uh, like what we would like, uh, or we think is a good product that we can take um, and use for the uh, uh, what we call um, you know a, a deck or uh, call a business plan. So. That, that would be the process. That's just like one example, but maybe there's other projects that we take on and we we would go through that same sort of step process. Explain the why, show us the how, how do we execute against it, have a finished product and that finished product comparing it against good, good and bad examples. So these are like different filters that every, every, like... Yeah, fil filters might be one way to think about it. It's just like, a, it's literally like I, said, like I said, like a system. This is the system. So that we all can make good decisions. We, 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 it will help us lead to making uh, really solid uh, decisions about any piece of the, of the business. Yeah, I, yeah think, I think it's good. I think it makes sense. Yeah, for me also totally makes sense. It's almost like um, what, we, uh, what we do every day if we want to uh, make like a thoughtful decision. Even something simple. Uh, if I want to, I don't know, take a yoga class, right? You just don't go without asking yourself, why do I want to go there just to go there? Or so usually it will be- oh, Some people do that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, some people do that. But if you want to, of course, people mindlessly follow something, but if we, uh, or, or different decision will be like, oh, buying why? Often people don't ask themselves why, this question why so they just buy and buy and buy and then create you know and have lots of stuff because they didn't ask themselves why 
So for me, it's almost like a basic three uh, questions you we ask ourselves without even acknowledging it, you know, to, to make a good decision from small things to big. I feel like you just broke down uh, the process of decision making that we do every day. I mean, or, or at least, you know, we yeah. try. Yeah, I think so. I just wanted to systematize it, right? Because uh -huh. then, then if we like, if, if people liked it, we liked it as a team, we can put it into place. And then anytime we have a project, whoever brings that project to a place, whether it's a feasibility center, whether it's a uh, mission statement, whether it's whatever it is, like maybe it's new technology, like, you know, Brian and Russell might present to us so that we all get to a certain place where we're like, okay, like, hey, this is the tech we think you're about to, approaching it in this way, X, Y, Z. And they can present it in a way so we can all have somewhat thoughtful opinions on it, can provide a thoughtful opinion on or perspective on it. So it's kind of like a system to cover your bases so that when we come to present, we, we have the information that we kind of expect the team. Okay. Sounds good. So we avoid kind of like circling around, I think. So we have it already all like right there. Yeah, I think I hope I hope it would help us be like a little bit more streamlined. Um, and and once again, like it just like it, it, it'll hopefully I believe it'll help us all get to a level where we can make a bit more thoughtful uh, decisions and thoughts, bring more thoughtful like input to whatever the like proposal or idea is that comes to play, right? Like it might be somebody who does a little bit more research or like, you know, like, you know, Brad knows a decent amount about this small campus. So he, he, he explained the why and of, uh, of, of, of the business model canvas, even like, um, you know, showed us like how to fill one out and showed us some examples. So like, I think all of us got to a little bit better place. And now even, even then though, we've asked for more material so that we could be more insightful, right? So yeah. that, that allows for us to um, be able to fill up the, the canvas more thoughtfully. But we, I think Brad explained the importance to us so we understood why we were doing it in the first place. So it's kind of just like systematizing some of this stuff. Yes. Also, yeah. I, I see like this is good if two people or more are, are working on the same thing. This kind of like, it makes it easy to divide the work. Like, oh, I'll talk to, to experts and I'll do a research like good and bad examples or, um, and then you like, you make sure like, as you said, as Russell said, that you have this information required when you present it to the team. And then let's say someone would have a question like one person presenting then someone else would have a question so the, the first person would already have an answer. Not there will be, oh, you are right. Let me research this again. So I think it would be already like all present. I would I like to say though that, oh, sorry, you will. Uh... No, I think I finished. Oh, okay. I would like to say that sometimes there might not be an expert or there might not be like, we might not be able to hit all the bullets on every on every proposal. But I think if you, if if we try to go through the system, I think that'll be a helpful, helpful. Oh yeah, it, the point of clarification on the on the the like the tools of measurement. Yeah, you don't have to have all those. It, it was just like we can pick one or two or two of three or whatever it is. We just we should have some way to gauge uh, if we're done it. We've done it correctly. Okay. Whether it be an expert, whether it be a comparison, whether it be some metric. Uh, that we we find our we we create for ourselves. So so it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be all three. It can just be one, like one of three or two or three. Russell, were you thinking of a specific one that you that you thought there would? I guess I would I would expect there to always be some pro professional. Not that I like I, I guess I can't think of a situation where there wouldn't be. I think I think were a lot of times a specific one or I think a lot of times professionals are are biased to to uh, using a hammer because <laughs> they know how to use a hammer, right? I so gotcha. They might not, they might okay. be thinking too much That's in the box point. or whatever. So. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, Adam, any inputs on the system uh, that I presented? You want me to go back to the drawing board and think about anything else or can we experiment with like this 
going forward. I don't know, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think your whole point is uh, you want to work more purposefully, um, which is, I, I totally get uh, Ula's uh, yoga class um, analogy because it's like, um, I see that in some hobbies that I'm in. And it's like, if you go through the motions, you don't get better. So, so yeah, I'm right for that. Absolutely. Oh, by the way, uh, while I'm speaking and I have attention, um, sorry, I'm late. I, uh, uh, I thought I was early. <laughs> it was, I, I totally blanked. I was sitting in front of my computer for like an hour and I just <laughs> randomly clipped the zoom link. I was like, Oh, I guess the meeting's going on. So whoops, I've been traveling and, um, now I'm also not very bright. So, uh, yeah, apologies for that. Um, and, um, yeah. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? Ula? Sorry. <laughs> it's just teasing. Uh, uh, the, the, the daylight savings change. So it's just like teasing. Yeah, yeah. This, this, the sun usually hits my wall like around like mm -hmm. five thirty, but now it's shifted. So yeah, it's it's tricky. But anyway, apologies. Um, but yeah, um, I, Vivek, I, I do like the uh, anytime we could add numbers to stuff, I like it. So yeah, it, it, I think it's like the purposeful part definitely there, and it, it just like once again, just I I I, I, I maybe this is like a little shack in that in you know, what's his name in that audio clip. If you guys, I'll send you guys a link after or put in the chat. If you could just take, take literally maybe two minutes, three minutes, just listen to this little clip that he says. It's like super powerful. He basically says, like, it, 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 I think this system will allow us, like without even thinking, we just do the system, I think we will all be able to make better decisions. It's, it's like kind of like leaning on the power of all of us, like diverse thought, um, thinking about a problem versus like if, if like Russell goes and solves something, he might forget like one angle. And I think this system, when we utilize it, we will avoid making, avoid any blind spots and we'll like make more smart decisions. And that's what I'm trying to, I really, beyond, yeah, I think beyond just the, the uh, point of being mind more mindful, but also being, just having a system to, uh, so we, we, we avoid blind spots. Jennifer, Jen Jennifer, do you have anything you want to add? Oh no, it sounds good. I like I like your thinking on that. Cool. I think it would make our life easier. Cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, I, I just, yeah, just want to be the full time. Yeah. So, so how much research? I had, so one last question. What uh, during your research did they talk about how uh, how the if you should like use it to like. Should we, I guess like the next step is should we create like a PowerPoint template that has these already, these questions already in it? Or should we like have like- I was gonna- how yeah, systematized I like should we get? I was gonna volunteer to create something on Miro, maybe uh, like a frame that uh, kind of like, we could maybe Vivek, uh, we can do this together. Like, would you explain in the presentation, make turn into uh, like a t Miro frame, maybe, we find a template that can match this or we create our own template and then people um, have the option to use it if they want to. Perfect, yeah, I love it. I think that's, no, I think, I, I think I, I, like, I like us, I mean, if people could, um, you know, maybe- if For any given presentation, yeah. um, people could just take it and it'll all look the same, which is nice. And we could, also, we wanna start developing our graphics too. So that might be a good first place to start doing that. Yeah, that, that's it. So I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah, so we're a little, yeah, we, we are, we, yeah, we're a little behind. So, because in the meantime, actually, we make also edit. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we'll get to one, it. Um, which, okay. you know, like, yes, it will, this is very quick one, but um, so that's great. So, everybody agrees, you guys. So, action item is Erica and Vivek create a new frame for the decision making system. system. Right. Next. Uh, okay, Adam, you are next. You are just in time. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, uh, meeting time. Ah, meeting time. Is yeah. It? Sorry. Meeting yeah, time so okay. I'm going to try to keep this quick. Um, so just a quick request, uh, question. It's a request to question. So uh, I think everyone knows. So Ula and I are currently in Portugal. Also, Ani is here. Um, and, um, you know, Ani, Ani, 
we talked to Ani before we came out here and, and she would like to be part of uh, the meetings, but uh, it's, it's really too late for her um, in virtual time. And um, me and Ula, when we came out here, when we, when we decided to come out here, we agreed like we were gonna make the meeting time no matter what, like we were gonna definitely do it. But we're super awake. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna somehow do it. Like we're gonna figure it out like while we're here. But uh, Ani, Ani has like, a, you know, other like a, things that she's doing, but I'd love for her to be involved. And I think, I think you guys all saw that she definitely adds some value to the team and to the project, but you know, just with her schedule, it's tough. But she, she said if like, if there was a way we could move up the meeting time at, at some way, somehow, uh, you know, it, to where it would fit like, you know, like a, a more like reasonable hour in her day, she would, uh, she would definitely join. Um, you know, just as we, we would just figure that out. And, but I don't know if that's like a feasible with people's schedules. I know people have, you know, busy schedules, maybe the night is just really the only time possible. Um, and that's, that's fine if that's what everyone votes on. But I wanted to just put this out there and see if there is any other times like, you know, could we do it early in the morning or is that not possible? Is there like time during the day that maybe we could consider? I don't want to add a ton of confusion, but I just wanted to see if this was even something the team had any appetite for. And if there's not, then it is what it is. And uh, Ani will try to figure out how she can be involved um, otherwise. Maybe you can, remember you made that calendar in the beginning where we click on times that would be doable to us. Maybe you can do that again and we can reconsider. Okay. Yeah. Is, there, is, it, is there even appetite? I mean, it yeah. sounds like Eric has some appetite for it. Is is you know Jennifer, uh, Russell, Adam? Are you? Is there any appetite for it? I'm not trying to force this. I'm just I, like I just would love to figure out a way to you know yeah keep her continue to be engaged. And, uh, I would love for Annie to be able to join us. Yeah. If we can work that out. Other guys, yeah. uh, to be honest, Adam Russell. I, I saw Brad, you gave a thumbs up, but Adam Russell, is, is your appetite uh, and you're in a, I don't want to, I'm not trying to push anything. I yeah, just to push yeah no, no blocker here. It's just making sure that I can still make it, hopefully. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. if we start picking, like, if we yeah, try we, to we, find like two or three uh time slots and then try to see if we can all do it, like, that barely be the, the way to go. Yeah, the goal isn't not to like swap Ani in for anybody else. Like that, that, that would be like not the right initiative, right? It, it, ideally, like in the ideal world, like what I'm hoping is like there's actually a, a good time for everyone here and Ani. And that, that's, that's the, and I, I don't know if there is, but I figured I'd bring it up and see if there was an opportunity. Yep. So I guess I, what I was just saying was like, if we can get some times, we can figure out if we can fit everybody. But that's I don't, I'll put that together and, or Ula will put that together maybe. I'll give it to you. Sure. <laughs> cool. Yeah, right. Let's write move on. Um, we, uh, everybody should have time to think about it and yeah. see their schedule. Yeah. yeah. And okay, so now Adam coming back to our favorite topic vision, or, or is pushed again. Uh -huh. the, the, the mission voting. Yeah. yeah. The vision voting. I mean, I don't know if results or secondary third thoughts. Yep, Adam wants to take over. Yeah, let's sure. Let's talk about it. Why not? It's uh, what five weeks in a row now, something like that. Um, should we just look at Miro at the uh, at the board? Do you, yeah. Uh, Do they all get tallied? Somebody, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'll. I guess I'll do it. Um, do do do. Do, 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 do. Yeah. All right. So yeah, uh, thanks to anyone who uh, made comments on the left here. That was, that's great. Um, I don't have a lot more to say uh, that we haven't said in the past, but uh, um, there's one, this one was clearly ahead in terms of votes. Um, so yeah, I, I really if uh, leave it to, to the crowd. If you guys have any comments on your thoughts on this process, it clearly didn't go smoothly. Um, how we could possibly uh, do it better in the future, if um, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, anyone want to talk about it? 
Well, we definitely got closer to consensus, right? I mean, that's just three people who was the top one, one person who was their second. So, I, I mean, I think that's something, right? Mm. Yeah, I guess not like a consensus consensus where like everyone wasn't their first one, but right. It's a little more clear, right? There was last time there was a couple in the 20s, now there's one, there's 35, and the next one's 18, right? Uh correct. Yeah. Oh, two 18s. Yeah. yeah. I would like to actually say something for, for this and for the future ones, the way when we have to do something like that. I would like to propose like uh like two stages voting or three for example like now we finally reach uh, something and we would pick either three or four the best ones and we would do the second voting you know to mm. pick already from the best ones something because to be honest like i had um i would like i was torn apart because uh each of them was not perfect but had they had like half that i i really liked so um, maybe I would see that in the you know, in the next one. So I would like to propose something like this: like pick few, I don't know, three or the best ones, and do the last voting. Do you think the uh, Fibonacci sequence was not didn't weight it correctly? Nah, like know. we were, you know, everyone kind of did pick like their first, second, third, fourth, fourth and fifth, right? I, actually, uh, speaking to this point, I like. Actually, I've been thinking what something what she just said and what you said also, Brad, about consensus. And I think so for a couple of reasons, I think this mission statement is tricky. Part, I mainly blame myself, like or partly blame myself. Like I know I've been a little bit of a wrench on this. Um, and I, 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 I actually thought about it a lot, like why. And I, I, I think part of the 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 issue is and um, is like this does it the voting process in some ways is not really consensus and it's like more kind of like falls into majority rules and and mm -hmm. so i had been thinking about that a lot it's like last week and to uh, a little bit to ula's point i was thinking like maybe what we should do is try to like pick the like meet the top three or five scores present it and then uh uh those who are like most passionate they can talk about why they're most passionate about that particular statement. And those who, who feel like it's missing something, we can talk about that. And then we can try to like literally massage it so that we are more thoughtful about including, if like we agree, like maybe like one of the statements is missing an essence that we all agree about, right? Like maybe it's, and then we can try to incorporate that essence that person brings up and then we can potentially work more closely to consensus uh, literally I, I have a i don't know this is an idea just a thought if what if we went to slack and started a channel for this and yeah. just posted the ones and thumbs up put a thumbs up on the ones that you like and then the ones that have the most thumbs up or the ones that have all of us thumbs up Finally, maybe we'll get one that has, we can just keep trying variations until we get one that has everyone's uh, buy-in. Right, and not come back to this again on the meeting, but you know, because it's kind yes, of- like, I like them. We could kind of progress with this uh, on the Slack. And eventually when we come closer to, to the end, I did want to say that, like, um, while it is majority rules, it also kind of is consensus because we still have to get everyone to agree, right? So if we went to a vote and we and we 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 didn't get one, we got one person to say no, I absolutely not, we can't move forward, then we and we couldn't move forward. So it is consensus still. Um, that being said, like, um, I kind of liked what Calvin kind of proposed last week, which was, could this be our tentative? Could this be our tentative uh, mission statement while we're in steering committee, and then later on we can we can do a, a do another uh, attempt at it later on when we become the real thing. Um, I personally would like to do what Jennifer and Ula proposed, like together to 
choose the top five or something and then have a conversation on Slack, like analyzing each each one. Um, yeah, because I, I think it's like, I don't know if you read what I, what I share on Slack, but like, if we get this right, it's gonna save us other decisions later. So I think it's very important to get it, uh, not perfect, but close to like what everyone agrees on like um i don't like agreeing uh, for instance like i will i will block the one that's winner no sorry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even for just the steering committee as a tentative thing um yeah like i i, I um, yeah i would like to like do what what they say like say okay this one is good this we have five because now there are so many it's hard to go through all the options we have five this one has this, but doesn't have that. But what about this one? What if we do, boom. And we can do it on Slack easily because um, we can read on our own and like we can, yeah, like maybe share some research and yeah. We can just combine. Not mm -hmm. Maybe we can combine because uh, like half of us prefers let's say number one and the second half number two maybe there's a way to combine them together and then everybody will be happy that yeah i mean that's basically what i was trying to say is like i think that way you're, you're yeah you're just doing it via slack and i'm kind of fine with that um you know that that way because you know the number one one to me like for example is missing some things or limiting some things i forgot i have to I have to reread it but I think it was missing some stuff. So I feel like if we were able to, yeah, either we do it through Slack or like a live, you know, live conversation, I think uh, we would get, you know, closer to that uh, emissions team we really feel proud of. I, I hear your point, Russell, too. too. I, 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 I could all, I, if, I, if, if it went to vote today, my, my vote would be uh, the same, uh, or I would be, I would, uh, no, I would say, um, I would agree, but I would say revisit when we when we had a marketing uh, committee. That 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 would be my point. So, like, like no, with the knowledge with the knowledge that like we would come back to this. So, but I, I think I, I like the way we could potentially doing it through Slack. I'm sorry to interrupt. We just crossed the, our time, yeah. so I just want to make sure that everybody's okay staying a little longer. Yeah. A few minutes. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I would definitely. I mean, I would go for uh, taking this to Slack, having more discussion, and going with uh, the top five. I, I I like that idea too. Okay, Adam. Um. Sure. Yeah. I feel bad, Brad. Adam's like, oh my god. Go ahead. <laughs> I I'll be real with you. Like, I I've spent like, I just feel like I'm wasting my time. Um. Uh, a little bit um it's like uh i know like the massive hurdles ahead of us and it just feels like um i'd like to focus on some stuff where i actually could add value to the uh to the group um so i i, I look forward to that um probably when the feasibility study starts happening so um however you want to resolve this cool with me um so yeah let's just keep moving forward Thank you. Adam, you came in a little late. Did you get the plan? So the, the new plan about business model canvas, we're going to focus on it next week. So the whole next meeting. Oh, no, but sounds oh, okay. good to me. I just yeah. remembered that like, <laughs> we had this whole discussion about. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, um, but we were going to do business, finish the business model canvas and then talk about uh, feasibility studies and stuff like that after that. Okay. So it is coming. Don't feel, you know, it's not too sure. far. I'll wait for it. Looking forward. Hey, I, I, yeah. And to that point, I, you know, I talked to David today, David Hammer, and he, and he, uh, he said, we're making good progress. Like he's a, everyone I see, it's like, I know while we're in the weeds of it, it feels like we're not moving fast enough, but everyone there is like super impressed by the speed of which we're working. And um, we even talked about the feasibility study stuff. Um, or actually I have a, a call with, as a particular business analyst there on Friday. Uh, if anyone wants to join, I'll actually, uh, I'll send you guys a details timing. Any of you guys are welcome. It's on Friday at 2 p.m. So 
we'll, I'm already thinking ahead. I'm tr- I was trying to get ahead of the game so that we can tackle it um, swiftly as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, I'm going to add two action items that we will move all this discussion into Slack. Um, does someone want to volunteer for this or Adam wants to continue? Um, I'd, Jennifer- I'd, be, I'd be happy to. I'll okay. do whatever. Either way. Jennifer, you want to take the lead? You were the one who proposed it. Maybe, maybe you'd... Sure, I'll do it if, if um, we've been I feel like, like Adam's it. tired of uh, messing with it. So I'm, I'll am i take it if Adam's tired of it. Well, I'm going to put it as an action idea. Adam, unless you really want to continue on it. But no, let's I, not go back and forth. <laughs> it's OK. Well, we all own it. Like We're at the point where we all are owning it. And we've decided to just not do like not decide, not decide is what is what I'm is what I've gotten to <laughs> to the point of sure. like as a team we've decided like we're not gonna make a decision. So yeah. but yeah, I think I think having another set of hands uh, pick up pick up the work I think is gonna be good for us. And potentially moving it out of Miro is a good idea as well. Um, if if it'll enable the discussion and collaboration, so if we, it will not grow in eternity, eternity. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. M- Miro doesn't seem to be very good with discussion. Like I had trouble like clicking through all the comments and going yeah. in and out of them. Mm-hmm. So Slack could be a better place to do that mm-hmm. kind of uh, the discussion part of this. Oh, that's another benefit. That's great. All right, um, and our uh, last point, let's say, for today, um, your training. Yeah, just a quick one. Uh, I, I just wanted to get a gauge, like, how did, did we, like, how do we think about that process of mirror training? Uh, do we think that was good? Like, do we, yeah, is there any feedback or anything on that? Like, I thought, yeah, I'm just kind of curious. For future, future like in tools and things like we learned, did, did we like that process? And do we want to like more of that, or maybe we would even think about doing that for like Slack or something? Did you like the video, or would you like us to teach more? Yeah, I thought the video was good. Um, I was hoping you guys would put it online somewhere instead of it just being like hidden in our thing, like. Uh, could it could it go on a YouTube channel or oh. I don't know if you guys are receptive to that, but it seemed like a good video. Is it on so. YouTube? Or was it just in Miro? I thought you I thought it was just no, in Miro. Remember. Where did I see it? It was just on Miro. Yeah. Oh, it was adjusted. Was it on Drive? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you you want to you would like us to make it in public or something? Well, know. yeah, I mean a lot of our work, if we do it yeah. publicly, um, I think it'll just keep adding to our brand and you guys did a great job, so. That's true. Okay. You can also, I mean, like temp, you can make, you can upload things to YouTube and um, you get a link and then like the only people who can see it are people with that link, if you want to start there. We, we don't want to, you know, make it public. Get public. To sponsor our project. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's really what we need. To make them a part it's really up to it's really up to Ula and Erica if they're if they're comfortable with being being on YouTube or, or wherever you post it publicly. But yeah, no, I don't mind. <laughs> Ula, <laughs> I mean, cool. Okay, so we can do one here. We just think maybe where, but yeah, it's the same channel, but yeah. we can think about it. Yeah, but would you like us to create more videos so like this educational videos in the future or? Are you? Ready? I think it's up to you. If you if you enjoy doing the video, I think you should. If you if that's if it gives you joy, if it sparks joy, I think you should do it. I, I guess also the other question would be like, did do you guys all feel pretty comfortable with Miro now, or is there any other like questions for the for the two ladies to perhaps um, you know help you guys use it better? I feel pretty comfortable. I think practicing the like practicing the little the uh, the, 
the box over there was more helpful than the video. Not that the video was not helpful because I think it was good to like start with. Um, but I think if, if there was like one thing to do that we were gonna, you know, if we had to pick one, I would say have like a, like a tutorial somebody like went through or like worked through, if that makes sense. Yeah, because I, I feel like the, the, these trainings were helpful and I, I like if we're going to mirror seeming like the shaping up to be like our main hub or tool. So just mm -hmm. that we're all like feeling pretty confident how the tool works is it will really help us in general, our general productivity as a team. So mm -hmm. I, I felt it was really handy. Yeah, I mean, there is much more to even though like maybe you feel comfortable with this, I think so many more components tools yeah that we can still learn uh okay well uh, okay so we will think what to do next every time we um Maybe we can just like uh we can have a, a, a talk and you and you and me can get together and say oh look this is, looks interesting let's share it with the group yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah or you like make a video or another yeah uh -huh. mm -hmm. guys I'm gonna have to go soon yeah yep. Yep. yep um sorry mm -hmm. uh, we're also gonna fade no. Erica sorry are you tuning off already or no, I have like five minutes. Yes. So let's just, um, so let's just uh, wrap it up and say quickly how everybody feels, how did the meeting go, and we finish. Awesome. Okay, I start. Uh, I think it was, uh, it was good. Um, just <laughs> got blind right now, what to say. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was fine, especially it's 2 a.m. here. <laughs> We're alive. I, I'm glad we did it. And yeah, great see, uh, great seeing everybody. Um, great teamwork. And yep, yeah, moving forward. Thank you, Russell. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, I thought this was a good meeting. It was long. Um, having Calvin here and then Adam here is just like, I don't know, it felt like two meetings back to back. Just because I don't know, it just felt different. Um, so it was it was great, like though. Uh, but I'm I'm tired. I think the two hour meetings are are getting to me. I, I think if we were gonna do, if we're gonna switch the time. I think if we had like one hour all hands, I think that's probably better. And then we can have smaller meetings. Like me and Calvin met twice or three times last week, um, really briefly, but um, and spontaneously. But um, yeah, it starts. To, I'm. It's starting to eat into my time a lot more than I thought it would, and so, but and like just the how long this meeting is. I know we we trying to cover so much, but um, I don't know. Just food for thought. Nothing, nothing there. But uh, I'll I'll kick it over to Brad. Yeah, um, yeah. I think the I mean I think the work you you did Russell with with Calvin was really good, and I think it it kind of gets to the stuff that I think is really difficult to, like, I, I think the problem with business model canvas is that, is when people keep it very kind of vague and they're like, well, my customers are everybody and our value proposition is this and partners are people, you know, partners are companies that provide the value proposition for us. And, you know, it's like, they keep it very vague. And I think you guys dived into it really well. Um, so that was good. And I think it's like a, a framework that I think we can use or like a system we can use um, for the rest of the blocks too, possibly. Um, so that was really good to see. Um, I think it was good to see us pivot a little bit on how we get through the business model canvas. Um, I think that was good to see that like everyone kind of come together and say, okay, let's adjust the, the plan a little bit. Um, so yeah, that was good too. Um, let's go. Um, Adam, what are, you, what are your thoughts? Great meeting. I think it's really important that we all show up on time. So um, honestly, I do get annoyed by that. So, um, whoops. Um, but um, yeah, now that I'm through the uh, um, mission stuff, Brad, I actually, I might follow up with you after the meeting, um, see if I could give you a hand um, to just fill my five hours for the week. Um, so I'll contact you directly 
Uh, Russell, I think you're on to something uh, in these two hour meetings, especially towards the end. It's like I, I and after, you know, a full day of work, it's tough. Um, so um, maybe little things like being strict about ending on time would be great. Um, or like, yeah, maybe. And I think as we evolve, we'll, we'll subspecialize a lot more. So maybe the full group meeting won't be two hours and you might um, have little committees that meet more regularly. So I think it can evolve and, um, and all that, but, um, but yeah, good to see everyone. Oh, um, Vivek, how's the move? Oh, cool, cool. Actually, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it to Je uh, Erica because I know she actually had to jump off, so I don't want. But but I'll, I'll I'll speak up after. Oh, good point. Good point. Erica, to stay too too late. I know she needed to jump off. Thank you. I I like that we are like learning how to work together and like uh, figure it like the figure out the systems and I like that we are going to try to do have a discussion formal discussion on slack because that can save us meeting times like we're not going to go over the, the mission again in the meetings until maybe we present the final product or like but we I think it's important that this week we, we actually the people that want to still work on the mission statement commit to like have a discussion on slack follow up on that discussion so we can shorten our meetings because it seems that it will benefit everybody if we could do that. That's all I have to say. And thank you, everybody. It was nice seeing you and uh, see you next week. Yeah. Bye. Um, I, uh, I thought this meeting was good. Um, uh, as usual, I'm always, I'm always happy, but um, uh, I, I definitely hear you guys on the on the two hour meetings and and uh, I mean we, as you guys can tell we we go over I think it's because we're, we're trying to jam a lot into two hours so I've been really like um, mulling in my own head like how do we how do we do this better I don't know I don't know of a system yet but maybe maybe this is something you know Russell and Adam want to jam together on and think about an alternative but. Or if not, we don't need to do it now. But this is like something I've been also thinking about. Like, uh, how do you how do you get so much done and make sure that we're continuing to participate? Um, but anyway, getting to the, the the original point of the question is, yeah, I, I was really happy and uh, I, I was glad people were receptive to the system idea that I proposed and decided to experiment with it. Um, I also like I was excited about the decision to dedicate the next meeting to the business model canvas. I think we're going to chug through a lot of it. Uh, and especially with Brad sending out some material to prep for us. So I think once that's done, we'll be in a great place to review it with ICA and then uh, and then do the feasibility stuff. So I, 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 I think we're going to, we're going to, we're moving quick. So I'm good. Jennifer. Uh, I thought it was a good meeting. I enjoyed the brainstorming and I think uh, I agree with the shorter meetings. I think Ani said that she thought a shorter meeting might be good too. All right, thank you so much everyone. Thank you for participating, your hard work, uh, your energy, and um, I will send the follow-up email with action items. You can also find it in Europe. And yeah. Oh, and who was um, you know facilitator next week? Just I would quickly glance at the what I you need to. Remember, but ah, need right, right. I wanted Jeff. Um, yeah, yeah, whoever is the facilitator, yeah, if you can check on the mirror also, like what do you need to do? Uh, yeah, before meeting, during the meeting, and after. I think like Erica summarized it very well. That was helpful. Okay. Love okay. Love Portugal, you guys. Be soon. Take care, ciao. Enjoy Portugal. Thank you. See you.